Hi guys, it's me again, Josie. So in this episode, we are going to talk about the beginning of itching. Stay tuned. As we discussed before in the last episode, the first person who created itching is Fu Xi. So who is Fu Xi? Fu Xi was known as the original human, and he was said to have been born in the lower middle reaches of the Yellow River. Fu Xi was usually been recognized as one of the three ancient emperors in Chinese history, and he is also the first mythical emperor of China. His miraculous birth as a divine being with a serpent's body, like this. So it is said that Fu Xi was the emperor of the China during the 29th century BC. Some representation shows that he came as a leaf withered it, growing out of a mountain, or a man clothed with animal skins. However, for Chinese people, we believe Fu Xi is real because Fu Xi left us the luxurious treasure, the eight diagrams, and he was one of the most greatest emperor in Chinese history, and he served his people with his full heart. So how did Fushi create the eight diagrams? Well, thinking about this way, back to the time of Fushi, human beings still live in the Paleolithic period. We lived for hunting and fishing. So if someone went out for fishing or went out hunting, what's the most thing that he was concerned about? Obviously, the weather. He was concerned about whether the weather is good for hunting and good for fishing, or it is going to have a radical change of the weather and he might endanger his life. So people went to Fushi and to ask for a weather forecast. So if we want to know the eight diagrams well, we need to imagine that we were living the time. We were trying to use a thought from a prehistorical man to thinking about how it comes up. For some unknown reason, Fushi forecasted the weather in a very accurate way. He might said to people, "Well, tomorrow will be sunshine." It's okay for you to go out for hunting, or if you go to the southern side of the mountain, be careful because they might have a thunder. Or don't go fishing to the northeast side because it will rain very heavily. So as the time went by, Fushi's forecast was tested by his people, and people trusted him so much. So there will have more and more people came to Fushi and ask for the weather. But that would cause a problem for Fushi because he's ran out of the energy. So how could he do? After that, so Fushi left out some symbols on the tree or on the rock, a symbol like this, and tell people what's the weather for tomorrow. What are those symbols? For example, what it is? What's this? This is symbol of two one two, and this is the first secret code that has been discovered from the universe. Two one two, and two one two means raining. We're going to explain why it means raining in the following episode for sure. So to be honest, all the philosophical idea that we added up in I Ching was finished by the later generation. And people read the symbols, people start to have some idea about their lives, about the society, and so on. But in the very first beginning, those symbols means the weather. It is a very simple thing. So based on this two one two, Fushi developed the other seven diagrams. And the eight diagrams have been accomplished in this way. So back to the time, thinking about if you were the person who lived in a Paleolithic period, are you going to understand all this reason behind it? No. So Fushi just talked to his people. Just remember the numbers. Don't think about the others. Just like a computer code, zero and one. We use the computer. We use our laptops every day, but we're not going to discover how this program be written by one and zero, right? It is just what Fushi did. He just talked to his people. Just remember the numbers like one and two, and you don't need to care about any other things behind it. It sounds very fancy. So back to the prehistorical period, we had this digital system already. So it is not a new thing for us. Like nowadays, we communicate with each other with numbers, like telegrams, like computer programs, like the internet. So back to the day, we still communicate with others with numbers because during the time we don't have any language. We don't have a written language. We don't have words, and we just communicate with each other with the picture and with the numbers. So Fushi reviews the situation of the universe through the numbers, through one and two, and talk to people how to adjust their life through the numbers, through the rule of the universe, just through one and two. Very simple. But sadly, for thousands of years until to nowadays, we still haven't finished this task. We still haven't finished to adjust our life through the rule of the universe. We still haven't discovered 
the secret between one and two. So you might ask, how could a prehistorical person could understand these numbers? Well, that was the concern for those people as well. So they went to Fushi again and asked him, you always ask us to remember the numbers, like one and two, all those numbers. But for us, it's so confusing. The numbers confuses us. Would you like to talk to us some reason behind it? Fushi said, yes. So he told his people just to understand these eight diagrams and that is everything. So what is the eight diagrams? The eight diagram is a profound hieroglyphic without any word. Why? Because there was no word during the time. The written language hasn't been discovered yet. So how could we understand this without a word? Fushi was so wise and he created the diagram carefully after he fully understood the rule of the universe. So we call the first stroke of the H diagram as the stroke of everlasting. I Ching was talking about the secret of the universe since, like nowadays we're talking about, since the Big Bang. So back to the ancient time, there is no scientific equipment and Fushi cannot do any experiment to test his ideas. How could he do this? Well, Fushi used three methods to discover the secret of the universe. So first one is to look up, to look up what above him. Things in the sky, things in the universe, things above our head. It could be the mountains, it could be everything. Just look up. Second method is to look down. It is not to say we're going to look down to the earth, no, it's to look down, to look down what's inside of our body. Because everything that is in the universe is in our body. So to look down our body is very important. To look down yourself, to understand yourself is very important. And the third one is to look thoroughly. In nowadays we can put it in the words like to look in a wide angle lens. So through to look thoroughly and if she discovered that everything is connected, everything is a circle, everything is round around like this. Fushi knew that a whole universe was created through the images and numbers. Thinking in this way, zero and one create the visual world through the internet, while one and two create the real world through the rule of the universe. One represents young, two represents in, so they create everything. They basically are fundamental elements for everything. And we need to remember one thing because yang and in, they are not two separate things. We're going to discuss what is yang, what is in in the following episode. So I Ching was created through the nature of the universe. Or we could also say I Ching created itself and Fu Shi was the one who discovered it and pass this secret to us, pass this key to us. I Ching always lying there. If you ignore it, it will ignore you. If you want to talk to it, it will respond to you. But by how much you can understand it and from what angle, what kind of a knowledge and wisdom that you can get from it, that depends on you. It will never help. It will never approach to you actively. It's your responsibility to carry it on. And that is the real nature. Okay, this is the episode, and in the next episode, we're going to talk about what is yin and yang. So stay tuned!